Okay, let's do something a little bit more interesting and start creating graphics such as Hans Rosling's scatter plots or bubble plots year by year showing you the relationships between different variables and let's see how they how we can make them animated year by year. So I'm going to go back here, I'm going to click on back to go back to my shelf. You will immediately see that the map that we have created will be stored as part of our project. I, I don't like it that much, it doesn't look that great, so I'm going to erase it. All right, so I'm going to click on erase and publish it and then I'm going to erase it. You want to delete it? Yes, I do. It looks really terrible. Let's create a new one. So I'm going to go to visualizations, new visualization. And once we have access to the uh, templates over here, I am going to select scatter plot, right? Uh, we could try to create, by the way, bar graphs and line charts, but those are so simple that I think that I'm going to just skip them and let you just play with them. But they're because they're super simple, you just select one column for the categories and another column for the values that you want to create the bar graph with, and it automatically generates the bar graph for you. But let's go to scatter plot, which is a little bit more challenging and has many, many other options. As usual, a, a Flourish will a, show you some preloaded data, but we're going to use our own data for this particular project. Um, first of all, pay attention over here, you will see that there are more op there are different options than, than before. Right now we for example we don't have um, a projections because we are not doing a we are not doing a map, right? But we still see some options that were available be before. For example, dots, etc. There are others that are were not available before, such as x axis and y axis. We will be able to add labels to the x axis and the y axis. Let me make this a little bit smaller so you can see what's going on. Remember that you can switch sizes over here if you want or you can customize the size of this temporarily in order to fit fit the screen. All right, so this I don't really know what this is, it doesn't really matter. Let's go to the data and let's import our own data. And notice by the way here that there's another difference, right? Before on the data uh, on the data uh, section we had two tabs, one of them for color data or shape data and another one for point data. That's what happens when you create maps, geographic maps with Flourish. But when you're going to create a scatter plot or a statistical chart, you will have just one, a, one sheet of data, right? So we have these. Let's import our own data. And in this case, I'm going to import the other Gapminder file, the one that says Gapminder all years. Okay, this is a, a very large file. Let me click on import. It has more than 3,000 rows, so it's country by country, different indicators, but also year by year. Right? Now, let's begin by telling Flourish what we want to visualize, what do we want to correlate. So you see X values, Y values. X values is the X position, okay, the position on the X axis of each one of the countries. Y values is the position on the X on the Y axis. Let's say that you want to see whether there is a relationship between a fertility rate and life expectancy, right? That will be children per woman, and life expectancy. So the columns that we need to use are G and K. Let's put a G on the x-axis. I'm going to go here, erase that, and put G. And now I'm going to put K on the y-axis. And then I'm going to click somewhere else. And this will change, right? Well, as you can see, that something happened before because I actually preloaded G and G, all right, on both columns. And obviously, there is a perfect correlation between children per woman and children per woman, right? Um, that, that's absurd. So I'm going to change a y values to k, or that will be life expectancy, right? Now I click off by clicking somewhere else and you will see that oh, there is a negative relationship, right? So the more children a country has, that will be the horizontal axis, all right? The lower the life expectancy of that country. If you want to see this preview a little bit, a little bit better, we can go over here and you can see it a little bit better. But this is a little bit of a mess. And the reason why it's a mess is that we are visualizing data for all countries for all years. Because remember that E is the year. Right? So we have, for example, data for Afghanistan for between, between 1952 and 2012 in intervals of four years, if I'm not wrong. Right? So we need to tell for us that we want to split this up, this visualization up, year by year. We can do that in different ways. Let's go down here, by the way, and let's give Flourish the name of the places. Names are, it's column A, so I'm going to type here A. Color, as you can see by default, Flourish loaded column number C, or letter number C, which is the continent, all right? But we could change that. Instead of continent, we can, we can color by region, okay, which is column D, okay? So I could change that, and that would color by region. And then there's another thing that we could change, all right? Size of the bubbles. 
size of the dots based on numbers or categories. All right, let's suppose that you want to make the bubbles proportional to the population of countries. That would be column, let me see, or population density. This is population total, population density. Let's use population uh, total, which is column L. So I'm going to change the size L. Shape, you can uh, change the shape. By default, that is going to be um, a, a bubbles. Uh, but if you if you select anything here, like a categorical variable, the shapes will vary depending on what you have for earlier. We have grid of charts. We are going to get that in just one minute. But let's go to time. Right? Let's go over here. Uh, time creates, a, as this says, creates a time slider and connects and animates the dots with the same name. So the, the, the time variable that we have here is column E, which is the year. Or year categorical, we could use either year or year categorical, it's the same thing. The reason why we have two columns here, by the way, is that some visualization programs, when they see a number, they interpret that number not as a category, like year, but they interpret it as a quantitative variable, right? So 1952 counts of something. Right, but that is not those are not counts. This is just the name of the year, right? Therefore, sometimes it is useful to create a secondary column in which you would put, for example, the numbers in within brackets. So the software tool will immediately interpret this as text, as a string, and not as a number, right? But in this case, Flourish uh, interprets this correctly. So I could select column E. I'm going to select time column E. And now let's go back to the preview, right? Once we have put E over here. Let's go back to the preview and see what happens. Well, we have a little bit of a mess over here because we have tons of lines, right? Uh, besides the bubbles. The reason why that happens is that Flourish, besides showing you uh, each one of the bubbles, it also shows you the change of the position of each one of these bubbles over time, meaning in between 1952 and 2012. These lines can be disabled. We are going to make them invisible for just one minute, and then we are going to make them visible back, right? So let's go to line styles over here and click on show lines to uh, disable that so we can see just the bubbles, okay? Each one of the bubbles. So these are the positions of these countries in 1952, right? But you have the time slider, so we can drag that and notice how that changes, okay? So these are the position of the countries in 2012. You can either play or you can drag, all right, between one year and another a year. Now this big number that you have over here can be hidden if you don't like it like that, if you believe that it's a little bit distracting. There is a part over here that lets you a, a, a erase this big number over here. I believe that it's in slider on filter. Let me scroll down a little bit to see if that option is there. Uh, show time label in slider mode. There you go. If you click that off, that number will disappear if it bothers you for some reason. Right? So there you go. We have had a chart very similar to the ones that Hans, Ros Hans Rosling uses in his presentations. By the way, there is one way to uh, change the overall size of all these bubbles. We are going to get that um, in just one minute. I believe that is under dots. It lets you change the default size, the minimum size, and the maximum size. If you change these numbers, and you, you can also change the opacity, so if you change it to 0.2, um, it will make the... Uh, and then the outline, you can change the, the opacity of the outline to 0 0.5 to make the bubbles a, a little bit um, a more transparent. Um, I believe, let me see, just try here to change these to 400 to see if the bubbles changes in, change in size. No, they are they not. It's a maximum, minimum and maximum size, okay? In terms of pixel, pixel area that will let you change a, the bubble size. But in any case, the purpose of this was to show, just to show the change between the two, between the two variables, right? With, oh, sorry, between the, the these, number of years. Uh, now let's go back to the lines that I was explaining before, so line styles. Let's make them visible again. These lines basically show you the path of each one of these countries, right? So this transition that you see over here, those lines are basically tracing that transition. I kind of like those lines. I don't think that um, they should be visible in every single case, but if you want to make them visible for some reason, um, I would recommend obviously that you make them more transparent, so we could change that the opacity to 0 0.1. All right, and make the dots more visible, right? So instead of making them 0 0.5, 0 0.2 transparent, I will make them 0 0.6, and then the outline opacity, I will make it 0 0.8, so each one of the bubbles becomes a little bit more a little bit more visible. Online styles, we can also change the width of the lines to make them um, a little bit a little bit lighter, perhaps not that light. Anyway, and then as usual, remember that if you want to exp export any of these uh, slides any of these images, you can always go down here, download image, download as SVG, and you will be able to edit it 
in, uh, in Illustrator. 